I'm Gold Derby News and Features Editor Ray Richmond, and I'm welcoming Tobias Schwieswer from the Netflix miniseries, All the Light We Cannot See, to our TV cinematographers Meet the Experts panel. Tobias, the series is set during World War II in Nazi-occupied France. You shot it in mm -hmm. Budapest and the south of France. What were the unique challenges here for you in filming in foreign countries? Um, well, it's, you know, I was very lucky in Budapest, I had an amazing crew in France. I had an amazing crew. I had a really, uh, you know, incredible producing team behind me that helped me, in, you know, get, you know, equipment everywhere we needed it. So it was quite flawless and, uh, and uh, a great experience in those countries. I, I love shooting on locations and I love meeting new crews. And um, yeah, it was in that respect, in terms of shooting in a different country, it was quite easy. It was pretty much like being in the States in, in yes. terms of difficulty. Well, yeah. and also you know, every, everyone is, you know, they, they're so used to working with, you know, American crews or, or international crews everywhere that um, it felt like being at home. Uh, in what ways was it different shooting with blind vision impaired actors, uh, Aria, Mio Liberti and Nell Sutton? In terms of, you know, things like blocking and getting the shots right, was there any difficulty mm -hmm. there? You know, I mean, we all really um, theorized at the beginning what there's going to be, right? Because uh, we were, you know, none of us had done it before working with the blind with blind actors, but um, it was just so surprising uh, with all of them how fast they adapted to our style in a way, and um, uh, you know. Aria, for example, is you know incredibly intelligent and uh, would map out a room, you know, in on her own time. And she would come in and she really moved in that space like you would not even imagine that she is blind in a sense. Uh, and we were always very careful that if we bring up, you know, if I would bring up a light that she wasn't aware of, or we put any cables on the ground, we obviously made her aware of it. But uh, she she was, um, it was incredible. It was an inspiration that I've never experienced before. They're so professional. I mean, these were both uh, actors who both didn't, hadn't seemingly done much performing at all before, besides being visually impaired. It was just amazing yeah. how well they performed and how seamless they yeah, I mean, incredible. Both of them were like, I, I just couldn't believe it when we first started. I mean, we were all worried about, you know, noise that you have to create because for a blind person, the noise is definitely, a, you know, an, an effect on them. But uh, they adapted to us very, very quickly and we adapted to them. And, you know, I was very lucky. I had Lukas Bielen was my a camera operator and he has a really incredible sense with actors of making them comfortable around the camera. He was very good with both of them and they felt comfortable with him because it is something when you get too close to them, you know, making them aware where you are. And uh, he did an amazing job. There's some breathtaking scenes in this project, Tobias. One was shot that I can remember in an underground grotto set. What was that like mm -hmm. to tackle? That just looked incredibly claustrophobic and difficult. That was very, very difficult, I have to say, because the ceilings were very low. It was hard to get the soft light in that I wanted just for ambient light. Uh, the water is always difficult. Um, but the set was built for the camera. We had openings where we can bring in a techno crane. A lot of it we shot handheld. And um, our first AD, originally, because it was an open set outside an open tank, we were going to have thought about shooting it at night, but he really pushed for uh, blacking it all in and being able to shoot in the daytime, because it would be very hard to shoot in water at night, long hours. And uh, so, you know, we had Josh McClark in our first AD who had done Titanic. He was very, he knew how to, you know, handle water and, and tight spaces. So he was great that way helped us a lot but yeah it was challenging and just you know that it's always challenging when you have a scene that's supposed to be no light right and and you know i played moonlight coming through the openings we played explosions from bombs that were going off as interactive lighting but yeah it was a it was definitely a tricky scene and just being having our actors in water and our operators in water it's it's always tough water is tough but 
thank God we shot it during the daytime because that would have made it much more difficult. Yeah, anytime you add added another element to the mix, water. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. Was there a scene where you that you didn't think would be particularly rewarding when you were before you shot it, uh, Tobias? That turned out to be kind of glorious after the fact. Um. Yeah, I have to say there. You know, there's a there's a few. You know, there were some very difficult scenes that. Um, I thought we're going to probably be more difficult. It's a scene that when Werner runs through the city when the bombs are going off and he's running over the rampart wall to get to Marie's house. And um, there was a lot of elements that we shot. We had to shoot one one set was in Budapest on an outdoor stage where we built a rampart wall, which was about a football field long. And then we shot it in Saint Malo. Uh, and, and in Villefranche, another small town in France, and all of them had to match together. We had a lot of interactive lighting going off. There was set after the visual effects or the special effects. So there was a lot of elements that were going on, and I had to match certain shots that were, you know, shot um, one close up in Saint Malo, reverse in Villefranche. So that all had to be coordinated with background action and everything. And I thought that was going to be more difficult in a sense, but also it turned out really well. Like I felt it's a very seamless, seamless scene that I feel like everyone feels like it's a continuous scene in the in the movie. So that was rewarding. And then there's a there's one shot that I really, really like that came out of nowhere was a shot that when Rona gets driven to the Institute, the National Institute, and it's a close up of him in the car. We're looking outside, and we found this reflection of everything that's going out, what's what's about to come, and it's reflected over his face. These young boys training in the ominous building is all being reflected over his face. And there's one of those surprise shots that I, you know, didn't expect, and uh, it's probably one of my favorite shots in the movie. It tells so much in that one shot of the story. One thing I found uh, fascinating as described by Sean Levy, your, uh, your showrunner, at a recent panel was that while filming the, that French exodus out of Paris on foot to escape the Nazi invasion, the production used actual Ukrainian refugees yeah. who had come west to Hungary to escape the current Russian invasion. What was that like to shoot with these people as extras? Yeah, I mean, it was very, I mean, it was an emotional time altogether, right? Because we were in Budapest and we had a lot of Ukrainian refugees in the in the train station that we were shooting at you know, once they were coming in on trains so it was it was a very emotional time the war just had broken out when we started shooting they were there and um uh, and um yeah i mean it's you know unfortunately right now we're watching the, if you open up the news right it's it's terrible what's going on in the world and you know we were you know this is a reflection of what happened in the past and hasn't changed yet, which is terrible. Uh, but yeah, everyone was, I mean, we, we shot out there in, it was a very hot summer day in in uh, Budapest when we shot this scene and, you know, extras were there 12 hours a day, working hard. It was, uh, but yeah, it's emotional to see them, emotional for them, right? Yeah. You had, it uh, looked like you had a, uh, especially from the panel that I saw you on with Sean, that you guys had a, a, a great working relationship on the set. Yeah, no, it's great. I mean, I, I was lucky, you know, I did uh, the Adam project with him before. So we were, we we got to know each other well in that movie. So it was, it was a lot of familiarity in working together. And uh, he's a great collaborator. Um, and uh, I think we we just see things eye to eye, and we we you know we always had a yeah. It, and he also brings an energy to the set, and I'm sure you've seen it in the panel when when you watched it. He brings. Oh my amazing... God, the man is the man is just is 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 just a, a an endless motion, uh, and yes. and and amazing personality. Yeah, but we spend a lot of time in pre-production together. Uh, we go through a lot of the images that we collect. Uh, Simon, our production designer, had done a log lookbook. Then I saw that lookbook and I was just amazed how close it was actually how I envisioned the movie. But I, then I go and collect my images and then we go through them uh, one by one and discuss what we like and not like about them or what, what draws us to them, framing, lighting. And we spend many hours together, Sean and I, and then that gives us really 
you know, we after that we kind of know which way we want to go in the movie look wise. And then we spend a lot of time on location. We we scout everything together, we vlog everything and chart list everything together. So by the time we start shooting on the day, we really have a good base foundation of what we want to do. And that makes it just so much easier, right? It becomes more fun because you know what you what you have a plan and then you can build from that. But he definitely brings an incredible energy to the set, right? Like he, you know, he makes it fun. Uh, he makes it moving. And uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's also family because he has worked with the first ED, Josh McLaughlin and Mary McLaughlin, his producer on many, many shows. So it's like a family. You, you, you know, I was lucky to become a member of it. Well, I think they were lucky to have you too. Um, with that, we're going to wrap, Tobias. Uh, good luck to you this coming awards season. All the light we you. cannot see uh, is currently streaming its three uh, installments, or excuse me, four installments on Netflix. Thanks for joining us at Gold Derby. Thank you. Thank you for having me.